Hello class of Elect 202, the September to the December 22 this, uh, section. This is a tutorial to the Friday lecture. You already had a, a, a video uploaded to Piazza, so I expect you have seen it already. At the end of, of our previous lecture, the one before Friday, so we had a plan to solve the circuit in AC steady state. It went like this. If the circuit is in AC steady state, how do you know not? How do you know that? Because all the sources are sinusoidal with the same frequency and switches have not been operated in a long time. In that case, we represent all sources with phasors, you know, with complex numbers, and we represent resistors, inductors, and capacitors with their impedances, let's review what I mean by that. The resistance of a resistor is its resistance, so no surprise there. The resistance of an inductor is J omega L. Let's write that. The impedance of a resistor, a complex number that has only a real part, R in ohms. The resistance, sorry, the impedance of an inductor is a complex number that has only an imaginary part, J omega L. The impedance of a capacitor is another complex number with zero real part and a negative imaginary part, negative J, 1 over omega C. The values of the three impedances are ohms, all of them. Ohms. We can use Ohm's law. We can use KVL. You can use KCL. We can use MNA. We can simplify impedances in series just by adding them as if they were resistors. We can combine impedances in parallel. So the same way we combine resistors in parallel because impedances respect Ohm's law. And that's all we used to come up with that simplifying formula that resistors follow Ohm's law, KVL and KCL. So with that in hand, we solve the circuit for any voltage or current. Of course, what we're going to get is not the voltage or the current. We will get the phasor of that voltage or the phasor of the current. And then we turn that phasor into a sinusoidal function of time that can be evaluated at any point in time t. Let's have an example here. We have a simple circuit that has one voltage source on the left, one current source on the right. For this to qualify for an AC steady state exercise, both sources must be sinusoidal with the same frequency. Let's see. The voltage source has a frequency of 50 radians per second. And the current source has a frequency of 50 radians per second too. So far, it checks. What is the meaning of that U? Parenthesis negative t. What that means is, is that um, it, the, it, those sources have those sinusoidal values, 10 cosine 50t and 3 cosine 50t minus 3 degrees for all time until t equals 0. After t equals 0, those sources' values are 0. So that's why the circuit before t equals 0 was in AC steady state. And it could be solved before t equals 0. After t equals 0, and the voltage source is a short circuit, and the current source will be a 0 ohms current source, an open circuit. What about the passive elements? Well, the passive elements are given here. Resistances, inductances, and capacitances, ohms, henrys, and farads. We are asked to find the initial current, that is the current right before t equals zero. When the circuit was still in AC steady state, and we could use phasor analysis in every inductor and in the capacitor. This is the preamble for something we'll be doing in the future, finding the initial conditions in inductors and capacitors when the circuit was in AC steady state. So that's the plan. Let's solve the circuit before t equals zero when those sources were sinusoid and the circuit had been like that for a very long time in AC steady state. What do we do first? 
memorize where the elements are. R1, L1 on the top, R2 on the top, R3, L2 on the first uh, vertical branch on the left, and R4, C on the right. There, that is the circuit. Point one, identify. What is the frequency? The frequency omega. The frequency omega is 50. Why do I care? Because we will need that frequency, 50 radians per second, to compute the impedance of the inductors and the impedance of the capacitor. So that is the next stop. We find the impedance is at L1, a complex number, would be J50 omega L, right? Time 3, that is negative J, 150 ohms. That is the impedance of the first inductor. Impedance of the second inductor, J omega L, J50, multiplied by 2, negative J, 100 ohms. So that's, uh, those are the impedances of the two inductors, the impedance of the capacitor, a negative imaginary number, negative J, 1 over omega C, omega is 50, and the capacitance is 100 microfarads, multiply by 100, and then divide by a million. Excellent. Cross out, cross out. That is 10,000 divided by 50. And that is 1,000 divided by 5. You know that is negative J200. Negative J200 ohms. That is the impedance of the capacitor. Now we can write the values there. And so the first one are one. This is 50 ohms. I will not write ohms everywhere, right? And L1 is negative 150 ohms. And then R2, it's 20 ohms. And R3, that is 70 ohms, 70 ohms. And set L2, oh, I forgot the two here, is J100 ohms. And uh, uh, R4, 100 ohms. And ZC, negative J200 ohms. What about the sources? Well, if this source, the V source, will become a phasor. Voltage source, amplitude 10, with an angle of 0 degrees. Those are volts. And the current source is another phasor. Right? Will be 3 with negative 30 degrees. Those are amps. And we're ready to solve that circuit. How we do that? The same way we did solve DC steady state circuits in 201. MNA, remember? Modify normal analysis. I will choose a reference node down here. Reference node. Identify nodes 1, node 2, true nodes. Uh, choose the branch currents, right? I use another color. I prefer red for currents for some reason. Yeah. Oops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't take the color change. That won't do. Okay. Branch currents. Choose the directions. Any direction is fine unless you have a current source, right? like this one. That is a current source. But for the rest, you have freedom. And then we write equations. Any CTL equation? No. Any evil or KVL equation? No. We have only two KCL equations, one for node one on the left, one for node two on the right. So we write, let's write those equations directly on the HP prime, shall we? KCL1, KCL1, or let's write that simply equation 1, equation 1. Well, that equation 1 is some um, V source. Let me define V source and I source first. Um, v source is 10, and I source is 3 with an angle. I'm working in radians. So, got to be careful with that. With an angle of, I have to do parentheses, negative 30 pi divided by 180. So, that is a phasor for the current source. And now we can write the equations that we need. Sure. Equation 1, that is um, 
uh, the case equation for node one current on the left is going to be the value of the source minus V1 divided by the impedance of the branches, the series of this resistor, and uh, this uh, inductor. Yeah, that is a current. That is equal to the current on the vertical branch on the left, and that is V1 divided by 70 ohms in series with 100J. Super. And uh, plus the current on the horizontal branch in the middle. And that is V1 minus V2, oops, minus V2, divided by 20. That is the first equation. The second equation, the second, that would be KCL2. And that is um, hmm, V1 minus V2 divided by 20. That is uh, that one. Uh, plus uh, the value of the source, plus I source. That is equal to the vertical current. The current in the vertical branch on the right. That is V2 divided by 100 in series with, um, oops, let me just, yes, I can use this one, negative 200J. That is the equation. We're done. The solution solved the system of equations X1 and X2 and give me the values for V1 and V2, which of course will be complex numbers before we ask that. Let me go to the setting of CAS and make sure that I have activated the possibility of giving me a complex number response or we will get an empty bracket and use the imaginary unit to go back to CAS, close parentheses, enter. Those are V1 and V2, two complex numbers. But what they want from us is a current in every inductor and the voltage in the capacitor at t equals zero. Let's find those phasors first. So the current in the inductor on the top left, let me call that current in the inductor one, IL1, is, is simply voltage of the source. Um, you know what? Let me predefine V1. V1 is X11. So I'm going to extract from X the values of V1 and of V2. V2 from X is a 1, 2. Those are the voltages, V1 and V2. And now we're ready. We say the current in inductor 1 is V source minus V1 divided by 50 in series with 150. Oops, 1, 0. In series with 150J. That is the current I want. Mm -hmm. And I can do the same. Let me do that for IL2. IL2 is V1 divided by 70 in series with 100J. That is, uh, that is I2. And uh, who is V in that capacitor? I know V2. I can use a voltage divider and say that the voltage in the capacitor is uh, V2 multiply by by the impedance of that um, uh, capacitor, you know that is uh, negative, where is the sign negative, J200 divided by 100 minus 200J. There is uh, your voltage divider, right? Yeah, multiply by the impedance on the top. And uh, I better put parentheses here. Not, not to give the computer any ideas for an error mistake. So there is your voltage divider of V2 between the impedance negative J200 ohms and the resistance um, 100 ohms. Go. That is a V cap. That is a voltage. But now you say that's a wonderful, right? But what I want is to compute what is um, the, the value of the current in the inductor one at t equals zero. Current in inductor one as a function of time. It's a sinusoid that has a big value that is the absolute value of IL1. Multiply by the cosine of 50t, yeah, plus the argument of IL1. Isn't that so? That function of time was the current in that inductor as a function of time, 
before t equals zero, the amplitude was the absolute value of the phasor IL1. The frequency was 50. And the phase shift was the argument of the phasor IL1. That is uh, the function of time that is occurring in the inductor IL1. Uh, let me write the current in the inductor 2 as a function of time. The peak value, absolute value of the phasor IL2. Oops, multiply by cosine sine 50t, 50t, plus the argument of IL2. There, in radians there. That is, and uh, what is the voltage in the capacitor? Just, oh, the voltage in the capacitor as a function of time is um, absolute value of E cap multiplied by cosine 50t. Here we are again. 50t plus the argument of E cap. Mm, there. That is a V cap as a function of time. There you go. But we want to know what are those values at t equals 0. Let me make t equals 0. I L uh, 1 as a function of time. That is the instantaneous value of that current at t equals 0 minus, which of course you know is equal to 0, zero plus. And that is um, negative 681 milliamps. And uh, what about I L 2 function of time? This is the current uh, from the top to the bottom through the second inductor. Uh, t equals 0, 1.343 amperes is equal uh, T, 0 minus and 0 plus. What about the voltage in the capacitor of V cap as a function of time? Is 210.1 volts. And that is how you solve that question, my students. And this is your tutorial time. Thank you very much. See you in class on Wednesday.